In this Django crash course, you will learn how to build a blog using Django. I'm going to start with the very basic Django, so even beginners should be able to follow along. I will base the blog on this template, so it will look very awesome when it's finished. As you can see here, you see the menu, and it is based on Bulma. Here you get the search, some subpages, and then the posts. The blog will have all the functionality you expect from a blog, like categories, comments, search, and similar. But first of all, what is Django? Django is a framework based on Python for building websites and web applications. It was made to make it possible to build stuff very quickly and powerful. But now it's time to start installing the software we need. So I open up Visual Studio Code, which is a very good editor I always recommend. I created one folder called Crash Blog, which, which will be the name of this project. And down here I have a terminal. And this is where all the commands will be executed. So first of all, I'm going to create a new virtual environment. If you don't have this installed on your computer, you can install it by saying pip install virtual env and hit enter. A virtual environment is like an isolated place on your computer designed for your project. So when you create a new virtual environment and activate it, Every time you install something new, it will just be installed for that environment. That makes it easy to maintain packages and make it easy to deploy to a server later and similar. So this is something I always recommend using. You don't have to do it, but it's very nice to do it. You can also use Docker and similar. Great. So now that we have virtual environment installed, we can create a new one by saying virtual env and then the name crash blog underscore env and then if we're in ls now you'll see that I have a new folder here called crash blog env and this contains a bin folder with many scripts and similar and now that we have created it we can activate it by saying source crash blog env bin slash activate and now you can see here we got the new text here in front of my username, crashblog env. That means that it's activated. So if I now run pip, it will install packages just for this environment. And if I wanted to deactivate this, I just write deactivate. And now the text here is gone. But let's activate it again so we can install Django. Great. And then to install Django here, we just say pip install Django. This will install the newest stable version that Django has, which currently is 3.2.4. Don't worry if yours is slightly newer or something similar like that, just make sure that it's 3.2 or newer. Great, so now we actually have Django installed here. So then we can create a new project by saying Django-admin start project crash blog and hit enter. So now you can see up here that we got one more folder called crash blog and in here we have a file called manage.py. This is a file for running administrative tasks like creating super users for the admin interface, initializing the database, updating the database and similar. You don't have to think too much about the contents here because you're not going to change this anyway. It's just a file that you should know what actually do. And inside a crash blog folder, we got one more crash blog folder, which is kind of like the main folder for the project. Here we have an init.py file, which is just a file telling Django to treat this, uh, this folder here as a package. And then you have ASGI and WSGI. These are entry points for the web server later. You don't have to think about them yet. I will come back to them when we deploy the project to a live server. And then we have settings.py, which is global configuration for the project. As you can see here, you for example set installed apps, if it's debug, and middleware, where the templates are located, and what the database to use, and similar. You also set the language code, the time zone, and similar. And then you also have the urls.py. This is kind of like a table of contents for all the pages on your blog or your project. There are one page included default by Django, which is the admin interface. So you can try to start the web server so you can go into this and see what it looks like. 
But first I want to create a new super user. So if I run LS now, you will see that I'm not inside the Django project. So I need to go into that CD, crash blog. And then first of all, you need to initialize the database. You do this by saying Python, manage.py, migrate. As you can see here now, a little script was run. And we got one more file here called db.sqlite. And this is SQLite 3 database, which you will use for when we are do just doing this in development. Hope it's not too overwhelming with all the information about the different files. We will come back to all of these many times, so it will, so it will be much easier to understand what to actually do later. But now that we have a database, we can create a super user by saying python manage.py create super user create a username and then a password great super user created successfully so then we can run the development server by saying python manage.py run server this will start a local development server with this address this is not the server to use in production but it's very handy to have when you just do development on our computer then we can go to a browser and open up a new tab and paste this address there and here you can see that the installation worked successfully perfect so now django is running here nice and then to log into the admin interface just go to slash admin now you can log in with the user we just created so you can see here now we can uh, visit the site which just will take us back here or we can change the password for the current user and we can see the other users that could be here later when we start with the blog we will get for example posts here comments categories and similar so we actually have an interface we can work with the content very simple here and all this comes built in with django today we're going to create a new django app and show a front page i'm also going to explain a little bit how django works and what the views we are going to use and similar. But first I want to create a core app for the front page and the about page. So let's go to the editor or the command line where you have that running and stop the web server. First to create the Django app you say python manage.py start app and then the name of the app which in our case will be core. Great so now we got a new folder here. A Django app is a collection of views, models, tests, and similar. And for example, this core app will contain the front page, about page, and similar. We will also have one app for posts, where we describe to Django what type of information we want to store about the posts, comments, and similar. It will make more sense when we start adding data to these files. Our Django project is called CrashBlog, and a Django project usually consists of many Django apps. Great, great. But even though we have created the app, Django actually doesn't know that this exists. So we need to go into settings.py and find a list here called installed apps. Django comes with a few built-ins. For example, the Django admin area is this one. And then at the end here, we add core.apps.coreconfig. Core is the name of the app. Apps is the file inside there called apps.py. And core config is the name of the class here. So this will now be namespace. Or core is the namespace, but this is how you configure it. So now Django knows that this app exists. And then inside this core folder, we have a migrations folder which contains information about the database. You have the init.py, which is making this folder a package the admin.py where you can register database models with the admin interface apps.py which is configuration for this specific app models.py is where you create models for example post which contains a title uh, an intro and a body and similar tests.py is for running tests on this app and views.py is for example the front page view where we tell Django where to look for the templates and similar. Let's create a base template so we can show you how this actually works. Inside the core folder create a new folder called templates 
and Django will automatically look for a folder called the templates inside all of the apps we have. And then in here, create one more folder called core, and then in there called base.html. So then here I added doc type HTML, HTML, the head, the title, crash blog, and then the body, h1 hello and save and then to show the front page we go to views.py to create a view here let me say def front page and then we pass in something called a request this is information about the url you're on the browser and much more information and then to show the base.html file we say return render request we pass in the request and then render is a function or shortcut from Django to render HTML and show it on the screen. Now we pass in core slash base.html, which is the template we just created. And this core is the name of the folder inside the templates folder. Great. So now we can import this view into crash blog slash urls.py from core dot views import front page now we append it to the list of url pattern by saying path make this empty since this is the front page and now we pass in front page which is the view and we give this a name of front page so it's easy to access this from other places so if i now go down here and start the web server run server go to the browser refresh we now see the hello from the base.html file perfect so then i want to go back to views.py and just explain that this is now a function based view but django also comes with something called a class based view class based views can be very useful because they give a lot of functionality with a little amount of code but function based views is my favorite Class based views can be a little bit hard to understand at first because so much are happening without adding code for it. So it's not easy to understand why things happen. So it's easier to use the function based views. Great. So now just add, I want to add some more information to the front page. But it's not smart to keep using this page base.html for the front page. I want to create a separate template for the front page front page.html and I want this to extend this template so instead of adding this in all of the templates I want to make sure that information I add in the front page.html comes here in the body and to do that we need to add something called a block content and then end the block to stop it and then content is a name you can call it whatever you want but content makes sense and then to extend this template we go to front page.html and here we say extends core slash base.html and then to pass information into here we use the same block content here as well h1 front page and we can close it and block and then I just need to go into views.py and rename base.html here to front page and save so if I now refresh you will see the front page and if I inspect this you will see that here we still get the html head and similar and this is because you are extending that template and we can also get one more block title up here block title and block and keep no space here so now i can copy this block here put it at the top here and say home and pipe and space so now you use two block to co put information there so now we have a custom title up here as well, home pipe crash blog. So just to make sure that you understand how this works, you can create one more page called about, def about request, return render request, 
core slash about.html. So this will be an about page for the blog. So then in the core folder here, we create one more file called about.html. And then extends core slash paste.html. Oops. And then the block title about pipe space and block. This could be a hyphen if you wanted to do that, or similar, but I like the, how this looks in the browser. And then block content h1 about and block save. And then I just need to import this to the URLs file. So append about at the end there. And then above the front page we say path about slash pass in the name of the view and name is about. And the way Python or Django reads this is from the top and down. So it will start at the top and then now Django knows that the, mm, the path we are on should be for example slash about and then it takes this name starts at the top and just reads down until it finds something it matches on here and then it will find the about function view and render it which gets the template and then show it to the user here great so now we have an about page as well so the way everything here works now is that when we go to an address the web server down here will call manage.py which will find that here we're going to use the settings file which goes to here and then the settings file are going to use this root url configuration crashblog.urls and it goes in here and then it goes down into the url patterns finds the about path there call this view and then it goes into views.py where you find this function which calls the render function which finds this template which is this one and then it's being shown here to the user. Great. So now I just want to customize the base.html a little bit and I want to get some information from this template. So if I just go to the page source I'm going to copy a few things here. First, I can take these three meta tags, paste them at the top of the head, like that. This is just char set for foreign keys and similar. This line will make it uh, mobile friendly or make it possible to have it mobile friendly. And this is just some meta tags for Internet Explorer and Edge. And then I want to copy this, which is the URL for Bulma remove that slash I don't like that I can use version 0 0.9.2 and I can copy this style tag and paste it there great so now the styling should be okay so if I save now go back and refresh you'll see that something changed here that is because Bulma was activated perfect so then I want to copy the navigation bar. So if I scroll down, you see here, start nav. So I will copy this. And then go back to the editor and above this block content, I paste this. There, I just wanted to clean it a little bit so it, it has the correct indentation. And I do not have this logo here so I want to just remove this and say strong crash blog instead so I have information or the title there and the href can go to slash which will be the front page so here you have a nav bar which will give us this up here you have the container so it's not going to fill out the whole screen but it stops here and then the nav bar brand is this one the logo and then first you have the name of the blog and then you have the burger which will show on smaller screens like here and then we have a menu 
and we want this to be placed at the end so it's on the right side of the screen. In here we have a navbar item which is the it has icon left and similar and this is the search you can see here and then you have a input is surrounded is this one which is the search I see that this is type email and that is not correct it should be type text and then you have three buttons or links in the menu as well and it's important to have this navbar item is active will be this one which is the front page is size 5 is the text size and then you set it to be semi bold but as you can see here we use a search icon so I need to include font awesome as well and I forgot to do that but I see that it is here so I just need to copy these two lines go back scroll up and then below the Bulma script you can paste it there like that so now we can save this, go back to the crash blog, refresh, and now we also have the menu here. Perfect. And then the next step now is to add some space above and below this here. So go back to the code, into base.html, find this block content. To give this space, we add a section, class, oops, section, class, section. And then we just close it below this like that. So save, refresh and now we have some space there. Perfect. And we can also add a div class container just to keep it from going too wide. Like that. So now it follows the same width as up here. Perfect. And then the last thing I'm going to add is the footer down there. So just scroll down, find the footer. So it's footer class footer. This will go below the section. And the div class content has text centered. And then a P. And then just say copyright C. 2021 crash blog and save. If you now go back, refresh, we get the gray footer here with the text centered. Perfect. So now we have the design almost finished, at least for the menu and here. We still need to add function or data here, but that will come in the next part. In this part, we're going to create a new Django app for the blog. And we are going to show posts here on the front page. We are also going to make it possible to add posts here in the back end. So first we can create a new Django app by going to the command line, stop the web server and say python manage.py start app and then the name which will be blog. Great. And then we need to tell Django that this app exists so we need to go into the installed apps and then here at the bottom is a blog.apps.blog.config Oops, config. And this, if you don't remember from the last time, blog is the name of the app. Apps is this file and then blog.config is this, which points to this. So you can use blog here for example, just like we do core. You can use that name here, so Django know where to find this. Great, so now we have the Django app and now we're going to go into models.py in this folder to create our first Django model. And the Django model describes to the database what the data we want to store. We can begin by creating a new class, class post, and then here we pass in models.model. So Django knows that we want to use this. And then here we can say title equals models.char field max length 255 so this is a field for storing the title of the post we set we set this to a char field which is what we use to store simple text and we set the max length to 255 and then we want something called a slug equals models dot slug field this doesn't need a max length a slug is a internet address for the title so for example 
here you can see the Bulma templates. That's here you can see uh, instead of saying getting started, you would see getting dash started. So it's an address for the URL. And then I want a field called intro models.text field. This is for storing longer texts than this. And the intro is what I want to show on the blog, this little text here. So it's not the full body of the of the blog post. And then I want one field for body, models.text field. And this is the field I want to show when you go into the detail page of blog. And I want one field for keeping track of when the blog was or the post was published. So created at equals models.date time field. And instead of filling out this uh, manually in the admin interface, we can just say auto now add equals true. So when this is added in the database, this will be automatically filled in with now. So then we don't have to think more about that. So we can save this now and then go down to the command line and update the database. And to do that, we first say python manage.py make migrations. Oops, okay, I have a typo in the settings file. This was supposed to be config. So then I can run this again, make migrations. And now it says here that it created this file where you want to create a model called a post. And if I go into this file, which you have here, migrations, then here you will see what's going to happen in the database. So it's going to create a new table called post with the ID field, a title field, slug, intro, body, and similar. But nothing has happened in the database yet because to do that we need to run python manage.py migrate and this will actually execute the files in this folder. So I'm going to hit enter now. Now this has been applied and the database has been updated. So then the next step now is to just run the server again. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link to my Patreon in the description below. But if I go to the admin interface and update, nothing happens here yet. Because you need to register the model with Django in case you don't want to show it in the admin interface. So if you open up blog slash admin.py can open up, uh, we can import the model here from dot models import post now we just say admin dot site dot register post and save so if I now refresh here you will see here we got this blog appearing here which is the Django app and posts we don't have any here so we can try to create a few this is the first post and then we create the slug for this this is the first post this is the intro and this is the body for the first post like that so then I can save and add one more second post second post later on in the series we're going to make this field to be automatically filled out generated by this but that comes later the second intro the second body and save so now we have two posts here in the database perfect but if you go to the front page, it still doesn't show here. So we need to fix that. So we can go back to Visual Studio Code. And then we find the core slash views.py. And if you wonder if you don't put this in the blog app, it's just that we have the front page in the core app. So I want to do, keep continue doing that here. But the detail page of a post will be inside of the blog page. Great, so now I want to get all of the apps from the back end. No, all of the blog posts, of course. So first I need to import it, just like we did here in the admin.py. From blog.models import post. 
And here I need to say blog.models because we are not in the same folder as the models file. But this admin file is in the same folder as the models.py file, so we can just say .models. But here in the other app we need to point to the app first and then the models file. And then in here I just say posts equals post.objects.all. So this will get all the posts from the database. And to make this available in the front end, I just copy this and then I create a dictionary here and save. So now we can use this variable inside the front page or index.html file there. And we can use them here. So now I want to make it possible to show them here. And I want the posts to look like this one. So I need to go in here to the code and copy a little bit of this. So first I copy the section and the hero body and the container. And then I go into the code here, just remove this title. Then like that, just remove this space. Go back and copy some more. I want this section. and the div class columns and this one which is the post itself like that and then I can copy this whole thing and then I just need to close all of these divs and this outer section hero and now I just want to save to see that it's working. So if I go to the front page, yes, now you see a blog post here. But this is not the one we added in the back end. So let's fix that. So for each of these posts you have in the back end, we want to create one of these columns. So inside here, I can actually do it in this one because we don't need another column, we just need another content for each post. So here we use something called a for loop from Django. So curly brace, percentage for post in posts. And this posts is the variable we added in the back end. So for each of these we want to loop through. And we need to say end for to close the for loop. So for each post we add this to the template. Now we can show the title by just saying double curly brace, post.title. So if I save now, refresh, you see that you get two posts and the titles are showing here. Nice. So you can change the date also and the introduction or the intro. So remove the contents of this paragraph and say post.intro and then the date which will be post.created at save. Refresh and now we see a date here and the title and the introduction. Perfect. The date is not looking very good so I want to change this a little bit. So to do that you can use something called a template filter. And to apply a template filter I can pipe this into date and then say colon and in here I specify which format I want to use. So I want to use the m-d-y age colon i. So it's the month, the day, the year, hour and i for a minute. So save now, refresh and now we get a different format. So you can use whatever format you want to use. If you say big M or capital M, refresh you get the month and similar. And similar. So you can change this if you want. You can also remove the hour and minute because that's not always very necessary to have like that. Or you can use another template filter called time since. Refresh and then you get 6 minutes, 7 minutes. And if you then just append a go here. And then you see how many minutes ago we posted this. 
But the little problem we have now is that the second post is at the bottom, but the first post is at the top. So you need to switch this around. Django automatically order things by the ID and in the ascending order. So we get the first one at the beginning. So you need to change this around. And to do that, you need to go into the models.py in the blog app. And there we add a new class inside this class meta colon. And then we just add a property called ordering equals create a tuple and then we say minus created at. So now I want to use the created at field and we say minus because we want this in descending order so we get the newest one first. And since this is now a tuple we need to add a comma at the end there like that. So if I now refresh you'll see the second post first and the first post at the last so that's the order we want to have this in. Perfect. Today we're going to make it possible to view the detail page of a blog post and also add comments. So the first thing we want to do to create the new view is to go into views.py in the blog application. So blog slash views.py and then here I want to create a new view def detail request and then slug. And this will be the address for the blog post. And then to get the blog post based on this slug, we say post equals get object or 404. This is a new shortcut we import from Django. And then first we need to specify the model we are going to use. And in this case it's post. And then we want to set slug equals slug. And the first slug here refers to the field slug here in the post model and the second one refers up to this one. So it will now give us a, a post, if not it will give us a 404 error. As you can see here I get a little error because I haven't imported the post model yet, so I need to do that here. From dot models import post. And then I can say return render request Pass in the template name, which would be blog slash detail.html. And then I create a dictionary here. Post, post. So now the post should be available in the front end in the template. So let's create the template now. So in blog here, create a new folder, templates. And in here, a new folder called blog. I could put the templates right in this folder but since I now have a folder called blog in there and a folder called core in that template it's much easier to separate them from each other. So then in here detail.html and I want this to extend the base template as well. Extends core slash base.html and then we begin with the block title and here I want to show the post title, so double curly braces, post.title, and I want to pipe this like this, and block. I can just copy this, rename title to content, and then I close it below here. H1, post.title, just want to show that everything is working, and so now Next step now is to import this to the URLs. But to keep things as clean as possible, I want to create a separate URLs file inside the blog application. So create a new file, urls.py. And now we need to import path from Django, from django.urls import path. And we need to import the views from blog import views or from dot import views and then the URL patterns this is similar for all URL pages and this should be a list and here is a path and then to get to the detail page arrow bracket slug colon slug and then slash and this first slug is that we are expecting a slug in the URL and the second slug is the name of this parameter. 
you could call it whatever you want, but slug, uh, you understand what that means right away. And then here we say views dot detail name post detail. So then it's easy to understand what this refers to. Django dot urls import path. Sorry. So when I now save, nothing happens, but because now we need to import this URLs file into crash blog slash URLs. So here we can say path empty and then include blog.urls. So first all path that will try to go into this before it goes to the front page. So first it tries to go to admin, then about, then it will try all URLs in this one before it goes to the front page. As you can see here we get the new error now because include is not defined. So we need to import this from django.urls. So now we can save and this refreshed now. So if I refresh nothing happens. So now I want to make it possible to click one of these posts. So then I need to go back to Visual Studio Code, find the template, front page. And I would like to link all of these, so A, HRF, and then to link to the detail page, we use a new template tag with the curl brace percentage URL, and this is a built in in Django. And then we just specify post underscore detail, which is the name you find here, and then to specify the slug, we just say post dot slug in here. So first the name of the view and then the parameters. Great, so then I can close that and save. Refresh and now this turned blue. That means that this is now clickable. So if I click the second post, I will be sent here. And you can see up there, second post and also the title there. Perfect. But now we just need a little bit of styling. And some of this I just want to copy from the front page. So I can copy all of this actually. And then I need to find a template detail.html and just paste it in. But here I don't want to loop through. So I need to remove this loop like that and then save. So if I now, okay, and I can remove the link as well. Refresh. And now you see the, the date, the title and introduction. And then I want to add a, another element around the introduction, strong. And then below here I want to show the post dot body and save. So for now refresh we also get the body here and the introduction is in bold so we can easily separate them. Perfect. And then the next step now is to add comments to this blog. To do that, we need to create a new database model to keep track of the model and of the comments. So go to models.py and then here create a new model called class comment models.model. And then the first field here I want to add is a reference to the post so we know which post the comment belongs to. So post equals models dot foreign key it's called. I just pass in post and set something called a related name comments. So now we can easily get all of the comments belonging to a post. On delete equals models dot cascade. So when you delete a post you also delete all of its all of its uh, comments. So this is action that will be triggered when you delete a post. Name models.char field. Set the max length. This is the name of the one who adds the comment. Email models.email field. So now Django will automatically validate that it is an email for us. And then body. It's a models.text field. And we can copy the created at like that. So 
Now we can save this. Stop the web server because you need to update the database. We're running Python, manage to make migrations. And then the migrate. Great. So now we have a new table in the database. And we can run the server again. And then to make it possible to have a form here for submitting the comments, we want to create a new file in the blog application called forms.py because Django comes with built-in functionality for us that will handle security and similar. So create a new file, forms.py. Again, you can call this what you want, but forms.py makes sense because this is where you generate the forms. Let me say from Django import forms and then from dot models import comment because this is the model we want to use inside the form. Then we can create a class for the form, comment form, let me say forms dot model form. You have a, a couple of different types of forms, but I like the model form because then you get automatically a form based on the model you specify. So add a class meta for a configuration, model equals comment, capital C of course, and then the fields we want. So create the tuple, and the fields we want here is name, email, and body. Name, email, and body. And then save. Because post, this needs to be specified manually and created it will be automatically filled out. So now we have this comment form. We can go to views.py in the blog application and we can import it up here from dot forms import comment form. And then in here we can say form equals comment form. Now we need to make this available in the front end like that and save. So then we can show it here. So if we go below here, HR, so we have a separate line, H2 plus subtitle is for comments. And then we say form method is post action. No, we don't need to specify the action because it can just go to the page we are on. And then we can say form.sp, this will generate the form for us and gives us the, uh, the HTML we need. And then we need a button for submitting the form. Div class field, div class control, and then button class button is success. We get a nice green button, submit comment and save. So then we can refresh. Then we see that we got the form here which doesn't look good. We will fix that later. And then we have the button there. But if you submit now we get multiple errors. First we need to fill out. Because you can see here CSRF verification failed. And this is built-in security from Django. As you can see here, we get the solution actually in the template. We miss this template tag, CSRF token. So if you go back to the code, you can paste it at the top of the form. And then we go back again into the post again. And if I now inspect here, you can see what we got from Django there. We got a new hidden field called CSRF middleware token with long value. And this is security, so you can't uh, submit this form from other URLs than the one you came from when you go, got to this page. Great. So now that that's fixed, you can try to submit, but it still won't go. You can see nothing happens. And that's because we haven't handled the form in the back end yet. So we need to go back to views.py. And here we can check if the form has been submitted by saying if request.method equals post. Then we know that it has been submitted and we can create a new instance of it. Form equals comment form. If form.is valid. 
and then we know that all the data is correct and we can say form.save and if it's not a post request then we just say else and we can just have this empty but since here we get it from the post request we want to pass in request.post here so now Django gets all this data we'll pass it into this uh, class here and fix everything for us but there is one more problem and that is the foreign key for the post so if you try to save now this will crash so what you need to do here is to say comment equals form.save and prevent this from submitting it to the database and to do that say commit equals false so now it will just create a temporary comment for us and we can say comment.post equals post, which refers to this one, and then comment.save, and then it will be added in the database. So now I just want to redirect the user back to the detail page instead of just making him uh, render it here, because then you can refresh the page and it will add one more comment. So we just want to say return, oops, return, redirect. And then post detail, which is the name of the view. Then we just need to specify the slug here by saying slug equals slug and save. So now we also import the redirect a pair. So now we can try to add a comment to the post. Just refresh. Code with Stein. Code with Stein.com. This is the first comment submit great you got no errors there are no errors in the console but the comments are still not showing so you need to fix that now so if we go down here into detail.html then below this form we can go through all of the comments belonging to this post by saying for comment in post.comments.all and for and we can say post.comments because we added this foreign key and set the related name and that's it uh, then we add all because we want to get all from the database and then article class media div class media content and then at the top, I want to show the name of the user or the one who commented. Comment.name. And then when it was commented. Comment.created at. So you can also pipe this into time since. Just like we did with the post itself ago. And then add a line break. And here we can show the comment. Comment.body. Save. Then we can go back and refresh. Okay, great. So now the comment is showing here. I want to add a little bit more styling to this. So article class media box. So now we get some shadow around it. But I also want some space above this. But the space can be added to the form first, class, mb6, so it gets space below, margin bottom, that stands for that. I can add a comment number 2, comment number 2, submit, and then it was added there, perfect. So now we have comment functionality for our blog, nice. Today we are going to make it possible to add categories to this blog. So first we are going to create a new model for the categories. I want this to be located in the blog as well. So we can go in here and I can add this at the top here. And then say class category, pass in the models dot model. And we want the title, so I can copy this. And I want a slug, so I can just copy this as well. And those are the only two the fields I want. I want to set ordering here as well. So class meta ordering equals name. So I want this to be uh, ordered by name and then 
ascending order, so you have A first, then B, C, and similar. Sorry, title, of course. You see, I got the error down here. So then I can stop the server and update the database by running Python, manage.py, make migrations, and Python, manage.py, migrate. So then I can run the server. I want to register this with the admin interface as well, so we can add a few categories. So import category here as well, and then admin.site.register category, and save. So if I now go to the admin interface, refresh, you now have a category here. See this is spelled very weird, this is because Django automatically adds an S to the end for the plural name. But we can change this if we want by going to models.py and in the meta here we can say verbose name plural equals categories. Save, refresh and that looks a little bit better. So then we can add one category and call this for example Django and then the slug Django. Save and add another view view and save. So now we have two categories on our blog. Perfect. Next important thing we need to do is to now have a connection between the post and the category. So the same way we add a foreign key here, I want the foreign key here to point up to the category. So then I can say category equals models dot foreign key category name posts and on delete models dot cascade and save. So now we need to update the database again. Make migrations. Okay, so now you're trying to add a nullable field posts this one without the default. So this field can't be empty, so we need to set a default value. And I can provide a one of default value for now for the two posts that's already in the database. So if I click one, then I need to fill a value here. I know that I added two categories here, one with ID one and one with ID two. So if I just type one, both of the posts I added earlier will get ID one or the category one as the value, like that. And then I run the migrate. Perfect. So then I can run the server again. So if I now go back here into posts and the first one, you will see that this is already connected now to a category. Perfect. And if you see this category object, this is because we don't have a string representation of this class. So we can add that by going below the class meta and said f underscore underscore str underscore underscore and pass in self and just a return self dot title so I now go and refresh you'll see the title of the category here instead of just the object and the same goes with here for the posts you can just copy this paste it below there and save fresh and now we see the title of the post instead so that's much easier to understand so then the next step is to now go into a post here and then below the title here i want to show which or i can show it below the body which category we are on so if i go into detail and then below the body here i can say p small i want this to be small and then I just say post.category. Refresh. That did not work. Okay, I did a little mistake in the models.py. This was supposed to be related name posts, just like down here. Sorry. So if I now stop the server and just update this again, so just do the same here one and then one. And then migrate. Sorry about that. So if I now run the server again, you'll see that when I now refresh, you'll see the Django here, which is the category. Perfect. You can say 
category like this. Nice. So next step now is make it possible to click this so I can see the detail page of a category with all the posts belonging to that certain category. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. And to do that, we can begin with the view. So go into views.py in the blog application. And then def category request and then slug. I want the slug field here as well. So I need to import the category up here. Category like that. And then I can say category equals get object or 404 category slug equals slug. And then I say return render request pass in the template blog slash category dot html then add a dictionary here with the category so we can use it in the front end and save so now i can go to urls.py and import it there and the problem now is that we now will have two fields like this use dot category and category detail so to fix this I want to add another slug to this like this so I want to have the category slug in front of the regular slug here so then I actually need to fix the get the, the detail view as well so category slug like that so then I can visit both of these pages and then I can create a new file, a new template, category.html. I can just go in here, and copy a little bit. And then I can go to the in the front page, and copy a little bit of that template. I can actually just make a copy of all of this. And then go back to category.html. First I want to replace the title here with the category dot title and then posts is available through category dot posts dot all and save so now we have a template we have a url and we have a view so then i just need to make the category name clickable so here is a href i use the url again category title and then we pass in post.category.slug then we close the link after the title just like that so if I now refresh okay no category matches given query okay yes because now it looks like I actually am on a post or no on a category now because this is the, the this one which have only one slug I need to go to the front page and I'll get a new error here no reverse match and that is because if I go to the uh, front page you'll see that we only use one slug field here for the post detail which now requires two so here we need to add post.category.slug and the same goes with the detail page for the category page need a category slug there as well refresh and if i now hold the pointer over here you can see down in the left corner that it's pointing to slash django slash second post so if i click this I get a new error here no reverse for a category title of course category detail this should be so then i can refresh and now you can see that this is clickable and if I click it, you can see these two posts because they are belonging to the Django category. And up here you can see that we are on the Django category page. Perfect. Today we are going to customize the admin area a little bit. We are going to add search, filters and then a little bit of other cool things. So we can begin by adding search. So if you go into posts, sorry, you need to start the server again. There. So here we have the posts. So here I want to add search functionality. 
And to do that, I need to go into the admin.py file. So then I need to find that in the blog application. And then above here, I can say class post admin, pass in something called admin.modeladmin. And then to add search, which is very simple, I just say search fields equals, create a list, title, intro, and body. Now I need to pass this in to gather it post here like this. If I save now, refresh, see there's a good search up here. So if I search for a second, only this post will show. Cool. Maybe I also want to show the title instead of post and I also want to show the slug field and when it was created. Do that and to go in here again and then I say list display equals title and then slug and created at save refresh as you can see here now we got the title slug and created at and this can also be used to sort as you can see here which was created first and last and we also want to show the category title here so I can add that here category save refresh and now we'll see the category title perfect and maybe I also want to make it possible to filter this based on which category it is so I can say list filter equals category oops category and also you can list uh, the filter on created at so save refresh and now I can filter based on the category clear all filters I can see which was created today none past seven days both of these great so now I added a lot of cool functionality for the posts here you can do the same thing for the categories to do that we just say class category admin admin dot model admin search field we want here is just the title and list display should also just have the title like that so if you now save ref refresh it looks a little sorry forgot to edit here category admin refresh and now we see the title you can also sort this by alphabetically and i can search Great. So we are still missing the comments here. So we need to register these as well. Comments. Admin.site.register comment. Sorry, so it's probably one, just like that. So now we have comments here as well. Great. These do not have any string representations. So we need to fix that, just like we did with the self.title. You can say def str self self oops return self dot name but you should also have the post here so you know which this belongs to self dot name save refresh and now we see who created this comment but you should also have some more information here about uh, the post it belonged to and similar so you need to do that here so class comment admin admin dot model admin and then list display equals name and the post and created at sorry I forgot to add this one more time like that comma comment admin Refresh, now see the name, which post this belong to, and when it was created. Great. But it would also be nice to go into a post, for example this, and have the comments listed below here. And we can actually do that too. So if we above the post admin, here we can say class comment comment item inline. Pass in admin dot 
tabular inline. And then here is a model equals comment and raw id fields equals post. And then we want to use this inside the post admin by just saying inlines equals comment inline item inline. And if I now refresh, you'll see the comments listed out below here. And if I wanted to now, I could add new comments here as well, or I can just see the comments that are already connected to this post. Cool. And then the next step I want to do now is make it possible to generate this slug field automatically. And to do that, we need to change the, the these fields a little bit more. So in the, for example, the category admin, you can just begin with that. We say something called pre-populated fields, slug. This should be pre-populated with the title. So you can save this now and go and test it. So if we go to blog and then we create a new category. Here we can say Python. And now this was automatically filled out. And if I write anything more here, you'll see that this fills it in automatically. Save. Great. And this is something we want for the post as well. So save this now. Go back here. Try to create a new post in Python. This is a Python post. The intro to the Python post. And this is the body. Now we can save. Now this was added like this. Perfect. Nice. So if I now go to the front page, we have three posts here. Cool. There are also a ton of other cool things you can do with this functionality. You can add your own actions here if you wanted to. You can create functions for generating texts here or different fields you want and similar. There are also the other things you can do with the filters and so many other cool things. You can also customize these templates a little bit if you wanted to do that. But that's not what this tutorial is supposed to be about. That was just adding the basic functionality. Today we're going to add statuses for the post so we can have drafts and similar. And then we're going to fix the search functionality. And I want to remove one of these and replace the other with the about page. So we can begin with that one. So if I open up base.html and find the menu, then I can remove one of these. And then this one can be replaced with about. And then add the href tag here. And then just URL about. And then this one can go to the front page. You can just add a slash like that. Save, refresh, click the about page and the home page. Perfect. So then the next step is to add statuses to this. So if I then find the blog slash models.py file and then the post model. First I want to add choices up here. So you have the active one active and then draft and if it is a draft I don't want it to show on the front page and we set up a tuple so we can choose between these two choices status let's say active and then a label which will show in the admin interface draft so this is the value that will be uh, stored in the database and this is what you will see in the admin interface and this is just so we can easily access it from other places and similar then below the created that we can say status equals models dot char field because I want to store this which is a char or a string at least now we say max length can be 10 choices equals choices status and default equals active. So now this will be a select list in the admin interface and the default one for all articles will be active and this is a constant which points up to this one. Now we can save and if you don't stop the server and run the make migration script 
great. There we want to see add field to status, add field status to post, and then we run the migrate script and run server. So nothing should have happened here in the front end, but if we go back here and find, for example, the Python post, then I have now possibility to select between active and draft. If I save it like this now, maybe we also want to show this here, the status, so it's easy to have access to it. So we go to admin.py and then in the post here, list display before the category, or now we can have it at the end, status. I also want this to be a filter, status. Now we can refresh, and now we can choose between these here, perfect, and also see the status here, nice. So you see that this is the draft. So this I do not want to show on the front page anymore. Then we need to go and find the views.py in the core app here. And is that another thing, post.object, so it's all on the post.object.filter status equals post.active. So now we can use this constant by just referring to the model and say dot .active. So if I refresh now, you won't see the post here anymore. Nice. So let's do this other places as well. So in the views.py inside the blog, in the detail page, I want to add this here as well. So status equals post.active. So you can't go directly to a post anymore. And also in the category, we need to get these here in the back end instead of the front end. So posts equals category dot posts dot filter status equals post dot active. Now we need to make these available here. Just append it to this list or dictionary. And now we just need to change the template for this a little bit because here we loop through them by saying um, category dot post is all and here we can't use the filter so if you now replace this with posts and save we now use this variable instead which gets them from the category but here we can use the filter so if I now try to go into a category for example Django these two will show but if I go to Python the category here will not show. Great. But since we don't have any posts here, we should show a message about this. If I go to category.html, at the end of this for loop, we can say empty. So if this list or dictionary here is empty, and we can show a message. Div class, oops, content. And then here we just say, P for paragraph, there is no posts in this category. And then save, refresh, and now we see this message. Nice. So then we want to fix the search functionality. And to do that, we can begin with the view for this. And I want this to be located in the views.py in the blog app. So below the category, we can create a new view, def search get the request parameter in there and then we want to get the query from the URL so query or the word you search for equals request.get.get and then passing query and default is to empty so this is what you use to get uh, the parameters from the URL and then below here we can say posts equals post.objects filter title i contains oops i contains equals query so if the title contains the query this will be listed in here and we say return render request blog slash search dot html now we can pass in the posts here like that we can also pass in the query so we know what the user searched for, like that. So then we want a template for this. 
And I think I can copy the category template since much of this will be the same. So just copy all of this. I create a new file, search.html, and paste it in there. So now we can replace the title in the browser with search, and then above this content where we loop through the posts, we can add the title. That h1 search results and h3 for a smaller title. Here we can say query, and then we show what the user searched for, like that. No result for the given query, and then we save this. So then the next step now is to add this to the URL so we can access it. And then at the top here is a path, search. Now we give the name views.search, which is the view and name is search. And we need to add this at the top here since search would match this one. So if you added this path here to the bottom, it would automatically just go in here since it would match on a slug. And then we give you a 404 error because the category with name search doesn't exist. So it needs to be on the top like this. So then we can save this. And if I now try to go to slash search, we see search results, query is empty, and then the three posts because everything is matches on the empty. If I appear, say question mark query equals this. It will only show two of the posts. Great. And if I say Python, it will only return one. Nice. And if I search for something like this, it will say no results for the given query. Nice. But what if you want to check both the title, the intro and the body? Then we need to use a function from Django. So at the top here, Above this, we say from Django.db.models import Q. And this allows us to search in multiple fields. So then down here, where we use search for this, and so here we say Q. Like this. So now it searches for this, but so also forgot to mention that I contains. It will now check that this is insensitive for. Uh, capital and lowercase letters. So it just says that if this matches anything inside the title, if it's capital or lowercase, it doesn't matter. But if you also here want to search in the introduction, just add a pipe pair for or and Q intro I contains equals query. And then the same with the body or Q body I contains equals query and save. So then I can refresh. Oops, forgot to add the, close the parentheses there. See, I also got the error down here and it was added to the end instead, like that. So now the error is gone here. If I refresh, this is better. So you want to see what's inside one of these, you can search for body and then add it at the end here. As you can see here it returns all three because all of the body has something with body inside but not the title. So now we know that this is working. So now I just want to activate this field here. So if I go back to base.html and then up here where we have the form, you can add it around this one. Form method is get, not post. We want to use get here, so it's added to the URL. And then action, URL search. So now this will automatically po uh, point to the search page. And then I just wrap all of this inside this form tag. Save, refresh, and now I can try to use this. Python. Okay, that did not work because this input field doesn't have a name. So if I just add name, 
query like that. Refresh. And now try to search for Python. You'll see query Python. And then it returns this one. Okay. And if I click this, I get the 404 error. And that is because this should actually not be showing here because of its status, which is draft. So I need to change the views.py a little bit. Because we can't say just filter like this. First, we can add a filter here. Status equals post.active and save. So now if I refresh, this is also gone. And if I just search for empty, it will just return these two because both of these are active. Nice. Today we are going to add images to the posts. We are also going to add a sitemap to the whole project and also a robots.txt file. We can begin with the images. I'm going to go to the front page and show images here on top of the blog posts. So if I then go to the editor and find the models.py in the blog file, then I want to add one more field here. You can add it at the bottom here. Image equals models.image field. Upload to. So we need to select where this should be uploaded to. Then let's just say uploads slash blank equals true and null equals true because not all posts need to have an image. We need to make it possible to have blank and null. And then I can go to the settings.py file because I need to configure where this uploads to should be located. So if I open up settings.py and scroll to the bottom, we already have something called static URL, but we can add something called media URL equals slash media. And this is the URL in the browser, but we also need to specify where the fear files should be put on the server. To do that, we say media root equals base there slash media like that. So this will create a folder called media in the base of the project. And inside there, the files from the models.py will be put inside an uploads folder. So let's try to stop the server and make and run the migrations scripts. Make migrations. No changes detected. Okay, maybe I forgot to save the file. Yes. So let's run it again. Okay, it says that I need to install Pillow in order to continue. So if I just copy this and run pip pip install Pillow. This is a library for handling images in Python. So naturally download it and install it. Great. So then we can try to run the make migrations again and then the migrate script. Perfect. So now we have images for the blog. So we can run the server again. So if I now go to Chrome, I can edit the post and add the image. I can add it to the first post. So now we have an image field here and I can choose. Great. So I can just select one of these random images and scroll to the bottom and save. If I go in again, you'll see that here is now currently an image. I can clear it and I can choose to select a different file if I want to. And if I go in here, it should be available, but it's not because we need to configure the URLs for this as well. Because Python or Django isn't good at handling images, but for locally, we can just add a little bit of configuration here and it will show. So first I want to import something from Django so we can access the settings file. So by using this now we can access variables in the settings.py file. And I want to import something called static from Django conf urls.static. This helps us show static files on this demo server or this server here. And then at the end here, we just plus and now we use the static function and we import the media URL and set the document root for the files. So if I save now, go back here and refresh, you will see the image here. Perfect. And this is inside the media uploads folder. And there it is. Next up now, 
is make it possible to show the image here. So if I find front page.html, then at the top here, above the title, I can say figure class image, and then img src, and then we just say, sorry, double curly braces, post.image.url, like that. If I now go here, refresh, the image has attribute has no file associated with it. That's because only one of the posts has an image. So we here we can check if the post has image by saying if post.image and only then this will be rendered. And if save, refresh, great. So now the image is showing above this post, great. So then the next step now is make it possible to show this when you go into the detail page as well. So here I want to show it at the top. So I can just copy this code and then go to detail.html and paste it here. Save, go back and refresh and now it's showing there. Nice. And if I wanted to, I could actually put it outside these columns, like this. So it will be much bigger than the text below. So it looks a little bit better actually that way. Just need to fix the code, like that. And if there are image, I also want to add an extra class here, mb6. So we get margin bottom 6, which gives us a space below the image. Great, so now we have fixed images for our block. The next step is now sitemaps. Sitemaps makes it possible to go to the address and then sitemap.xml. Sitemap is an XML file with information about all of the pages, so Google will have a much easier time understanding the structure of your website and it's easier, easier for Google to index it, so everything of this is for search engine optimization. Great, so then we can go back to the editor and then inside the crash blog folder here create a new file called sitemaps.xml no sitemaps.py sorry and then we can begin by importing the sitemap function from django from django.contrib.sitemaps import oops import sitemap and I want to import a reverse function from Django.shortcuts import reverse. And I want to import the post model here as well and the category. From blog.models import category and post. Now we can begin with the category sitemap class category sitemap. And here we just pass in the sitemap def items and we have a uh, reference to the, to the class itself now we can just say return category dot objects dot all so we get all of the categories from the database and now Django will handle the rest for us there then we can do the same for the posts class post sitemap pass in the sitemap def items self return post.objects.filter post.active sorry status equals post.active because we want them to be active and we can also add a last modification date to the posts def last mod self return obg for object dot created at and we also need to pass in obg there. Now we can save this file because we don't need anything more there. Now we just need to go back to the URLs and add it here. So I need to import one more function here from django.contrib.sitemaps.views import sitemap. Now we can import the two sitemaps we just created from dot sitemaps import category sitemap and post sitemap. 
but I just want to configure this a little bit by saying sitemaps just create a dictionary category and here we just pass in category sitemap and the same with the post post sitemap and then inside here you can add it at the top path sitemap.xml pass in the sitemap and sitemaps sitemaps so we have the reference to this and then add a comma at the end there so if I save now I think there is an error no module name site blog.sitemaps and that is because I added all of this to the URLs file inside the blog application instead of this one so sorry about that and the same goes with the static files they should also be in the other so let me just take all of these four here remove them from this file go to crash blog slash urls.py paste them at the top here like that then go back to the other urls file and copy this file this line paste it here and then we go back again because I want this line as well sorry about this mess paste it here and then go back again to get this line which should be on the top here and then it's just this left then we can save that file Go back to the other and paste it at the end there. So now I can refresh. Attribute error. The category object has no get absolute URL. Okay, so I need to create a new function for this. So if I go here, so let's just copy this function name, go into models.py in the blog file. And in the category here, need to create a new function def get absolute URL self. And then here I just need to return the path to this site. So return slash percentage s slash. Then at the end here we say self dot slug. So if I save now, we'll probably get this error on the posts as well. Great. So I can copy this function and paste it here and I just need to add one more parameter like this and then in here first self.category.slug and then this one so let's try to refresh now template does not exist okay and the reason for that is that we need to go into settings.py because we haven't added sitemaps to this list here so I need to append django.contrib.sitemaps and save. So now hopefully this should work. Yes. Here we get the three categories and here we get the two posts which is active and when they was created. Perfect. So now Django will so now Google will be able to find this and get the information about the structure of your website. Next step now is to create a robots.txt file. This is so you can make a, the bots not to go to, for example, slash admin or if you have any other private addresses or blog posts you don't want them to find and similar. Through this, I just want to create a view for this. So if you go into core slash views.py, then I want to create a view here from def robots txt, pass in the request parameter. And then here we say text equals, then we create a list, user agent, colon star, because this should go to all of the bots, disallow, colon slash admin slash, so they should not go to the admin page and try to index that or something like that. And then Below here is a return HTTP response. 
slash n oops slash n dot join line text set the content type equals text slash plain great so this function just takes this list and create a string of it so you need to import this from django.http import http response great so now we can copy this and go to the urls file in the crash blog and import the view here and then here is a path robots.txt robot.txt name robot.txt and save and we can try to go to the website slash robots.txt yes so now this file is there and the bots can find it perfect so now we have images for our blog we have robots.txt file and the sitemap today we are going to deploy this project to a live server so i created a little to-do list for today first we're going to install the software we need on the server if I go to the iTerm or my command line, I have logged into the server here. This is a Ubuntu 20.04. The first thing we need to do then is to install and update the server. We can begin by running sudo apt get update for updating the resource images. And then when that is done, you can say sudo apt get upgrade to run the actual upgrade of the data. So this is always nice to do before you start installing software on your server. Great. And then we need to install a few packages as well. sudo apt install python3 pip. So we can use pip to install python packages. python3 dev. This is used for Django and a few other things. lib pq-dev postgres-ql-contrib and nginx which is the web server we're going to use so then we can hit enter to install all of these i've already done this but you need to run this command so then i can actually set the first task to done the next step now is to create a postgresql database because in production we don't want to use sqlite anymore so head back to the command line and here we are on the server again now we need to log in to postgresql by running sudo u Postgres, which is a user for PostgreSQL, and a PSQL. And then we need to create the database by running create database crash blog. And then I want to create a user, create user crash blog user with password crash blog password. Okay, this needs to be inside the two tuples, like that. So now I have a user who can access this database as well. Then I need to change the role for this user a little bit because you need to set the client encoding. These are some configuration you need to do for Django. And same with this, alter role crash block user, you need to set the transaction isolation. And we also need to set the default time zone for this user, so hit enter. Now we have configured this user. Next step then is to make or give this user all the privileges it needs. So grant all privileges on database crash blog, which is the name of the database, to crash blog user. Great. So now this user has access to do everything he wants on this database. So then we can log out of this user by writing backslash q. Great. So now we have a PostgreSQL database. So we can set done. And then I want to install virtual environment, which is the same as we're using on local server. So sudo dash h pip3 install upgrade, oops, 2 dash s upgrade pip. Just to make sure that we install an update to the newest one. And then we say sudo dash h pip3 install virtual env to install virtual environment. 
like I already have this installed, but you still need to, re uh, to run this command. So then I can set the next step to done. And then I want to create the folders and also groups and users for this project. So mkdir-p to create a whole path. Web apps slash crash blog. So now we can go to that folder, web apps crash blog. This will be the home for this user and also this project. So then I want to create a new group for this. Pseudo group add dash dash system web apps. I already have this group, but you need to add that. And then we can create a user just for this project. Pseudo user add dash dash system. Specify which group ID to use. Gid web apps and then which shell to use slash bin slash bash and then i want to set the home folder which is web apps slash crash blog and then the name of this user crash blog and this user is not connected to the postgresql user great so now we have a user for linux or ubuntu who can run certain commands for this project then we can set this task done as well and then we can create the virtual environment virtual oops virtual env environment 382 which is the python version i'm running on this ubuntu and then we can activate it by saying source environment bin activate and also want to go into the environment because this is where i want to download the django in the next pre in the next step great so then I can actually set this to done and then I want to get the Django project from git. If I go to Chrome and into git and then I have it here, I can just copy this address, go back to the command line and say git clone and paste the address. So now I have a new folder here, crash blog with the whole project in it. Perfect. So then I want to install the same packages we have locally here on the environment here on the server and to do that we first go here and say pit freeze hit enter and this will give me a list of the installed packages as you can see it's django pillow and then a few dependencies that django has so i can copy this list go to the command line create a new file by saying vi req.txt which stands for requirements.txt then I paste it there by typing i and then command v and then I just want to save and quit this by hitting escape colon w q and then enter and then I can install those uh, that list by saying pit install dash r to read the file req.txt great so now I will have an identic environment here as I have locally so then I should expect that everything should run as it should and I need to install one more package, pip install psycho pg2-binary. This is used for using Django and PostgreSQL together. Nice. So then we have everything we need there. And I also have the code. So now everything there should work. So I can set this task to done. I can set this task to done. But before I go to this one, I just need to configure the settings file a little bit so i'm going to crash blog crash blog and then i want to copy the settings file because i want a separate settings file for the production so copy it to settings prod.py and we can edit it and then inside here here we have a list of allowed hosts here we need to add the address to the blog which in my case is crashblog.codewithstein.com and we also need to find the database because we don't want to use SQLite 3 anymore. Here we want to change this to PostgreSQL Psycho PG2. And then we need to set the name of the database, which is crash blog. And then which user to connect to PostgreSQL, crash blog user. And then what the password is, crash blog password, 
and then which host, which is local host since we are on the same server and the port can just be empty like this and we can save and quit this and go up to folder so we are in the can actually go into crash blog here because you need to populate the database and to do that we say and to do that we say python manage.py dash dash settings because you need to specify which settings file to use and that is crash blog dot settings prod and then the command we want to run is make migrations okay sorry i need to have this in front like this python manager by make migrations and then specify the settings like that and there's no changes because there are no new changes but it's just nice to run anyways and then migrate so now the database was populated or created at least and then we can create a super user as well so we can log into the admin face admin interface afterwards create super user because everything we did locally will not work here anyway, so great. So now we have a user in the production environment as well. Nice. So then we can continue to the next step, which is install and set up G-Unicorn. G-Unicorn is an application server for Django. This will be used to host the Django part of the project. G-Unicorn and Django does not work well with media files, so we also need Nginx as well. And then Nginx will point all the requests uh, forwarded to G-Unicorn. So we can begin by installing G-Unicorn. pip install G-Unicorn. Great, so now we have it installed on a project. And I can go up one folder because I want to create a new file inside the bin folder here. vi bin slash G-Unicorn start this is a script that will start the script for or run the server for us so first we specify that this is a shell script and then we set a few variables first the name of the project then the django directory slash web apps and then the home folder the environment and then the name of the project again and then this socket file will be created automatically by this script so you don't have to worry about that anymore the user, which is the Linux user we created, and then the group, which we also created. Num workers are the number of CPUs you have on your server, multiplied by two, and then add one. I have one CPU, and when I multiply that by two, I get two, and then add one, which is three. And then which settings file to use, which is the one we just created and which WSGI module to use. This is entry points for the web server. So you can see here this also points to a file in the crash blog folder. And then we have a timeout in case there are something wrong and needs to try again and again before it's just stopping. And then we need to start telling the script what to do. First it go in to the Django directory and then activate the environment. And then it's just exporting two variables to the shell. And when that is done, it's trying to run this uh, or set this variable. And then it checks if the directory exists. And if it doesn't exist, it will create it. And here we are talking about this one. And then it executes uh, another G-Unicorn script inside the bin folder. It uses the WSGI module, specify the name and also the other things from up here. And we can save and quit this and then we need to make this executable by saying sudo chmod plus x bin gunicorn start so now this is runnable you can try to run it by saying dot slash bin gunicorn start okay there are no errors so it seems to be working for now perfect i can just stop it then we can go back to here and set this task to done. Next step then is to install and set up something called Supervisor. Supervisor helps us start this G-Unicorn script and it will also check that if it's not running it will automatically start trying to run it and similar. So to install this we say apt install 
supervisor. Okay, I already have the newest version installed, but you need to run that command. And we go into CD, etc, supervisor, conf. This is where the configuration file for this project will be. To create it, we say vi crash blog.conf. And the content of this file should be like this. We have the name of the program, which is crash blog, and then the path to the GUnicorn script. And then which user to run this, and where to log. And then it says that it should redirect the error logs to this file, and then we set some environment variables for the language. So then I need to create this folder to make sure that it's there and get there like that. So now I created a logs folder. And then if I just go to that log folder and up one step, I need to do some changes here to the permission because if I run this command now you will see that root is, is owning all of this and that's not what it should be like. So to change the user, we run chown dash r because I want it to be recursive for all the files and folders from this folder and down. And then we say crash blog colon web apps and dot because it's this folder and everything beyond. So if I run the command now again, you see that crash blog is owning everything here except this one, which is one folder up, but that's okay. So now we can tell supervisor to use the configuration file by saying supervisor ctl re read so now it's checked that it's available and everything is okay and it is and then the same command but update perfect so if i now run status it was added here and it's running perfect now supervisor should be running and everything hopefully is okay. So we can set this task to done. And then we just want to set up Nginx, which is the web server for this project. So we installed that at the beginning. So we can just go to etc Nginx sites available. And then we create a new file here, crash blog.conf. First, I just want to create the app server which points to the socket file. So this is the socket file that was automatically created by the gunicorn script and then server and then I specify which port to use and what the server name is and the server name is the address to my blog and then listen to port 80 which is normal HTTP and then I specify where the access log and where the, uh, the error log should be located. And this is the folder we created after we installed the supervisor script. And then we need to specify for Nginx where to find the static files. And that's it inside the crash folder slash static. So if you go to slash static, this will point to this folder automatically. Because now we can't, now we can't use uh, the local web server to host this anymore for us. And the same goes for the media files, if you have any there. And then the rest of the server looks like this. So you specify a proxy header, which, point, which will point up to this one. And if it's not a file name, then it will pass you through to the crash blog app server, which is this one, which points to the G unicorn server. So you can save quit this, go up one folder and into sites enabled. Now we can enable the site by saying ln-s which creates a symbolic link dot dot slash sites available crash blog dot. So it will be created here. So as you can see here we now have a new file here which points back to this one. And we can restart nginx server service nginx restart okay there were no errors so hopefully everything should work now so if i now go to crash blog.codewithstein.com i see the front page of our blog great so that means that everything here should be working now so then let's just log into the administrator and start adding data just need to do one important thing first web apps crash blog environment crash blog 
and then here on the vi for editing the crash blog settings dot prod file because we have something called debug in here and this set is set to true automatically but we need to change this to false so error messages will not be showing on the website if there are any and then we can restart supervisor because we need to do that when we change python files supervisor ctl restart crash blog and then we can go back refresh and it's still working perfect so now you can log in with your admin user and add content to your blog which everyone can see perfect hope you like this series and if you did please click like below if you want more content like this you need to subscribe to my channel and also remember to click the bell see you in the next video